Ultimate weapon active and add when. <laughs> what are you staring at, Tetsuya? Watch it can go. I still don't get why you're even allowed to be in their territory. Everyone knows that those who leave Kabuki Show are not welcome here anymore. Eh, it's not like I'm here because I want to be a jerk. Please don't fight you two. Oh jeez. Tetsuya, you're embarrassing yourself. Can't you just shut up and listen for a change? Even Ibaraki and Tetsuox are pay paying attention. Psst. Tetsuox. Did he get anything? Hey, Tetsuox. Mm. <sighs> Wake up, idiot! You're trying to get me in trouble too? <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, that's why we're here. I think I covered everything. So, the warmongers have an ultimate weapon, and it's aimed at Kabukicho. I guess they're not targeting us specifically, but still. And calling it an ultimate weapon is a pretty bold play. I wonder what the hell it even is. Hmm. Sorry to interrupt, but it seems some of my helpers have heard something about this so-called ultimate weapon. I had him gathering information while everyone was getting some rest. Go on, tell us what you heard out there today, and don't leave anything out. At Gyobu's prompting, a group of little tanuki appear with a bang and a cloud of smoke. They proceed to describe the details of their reconnaissance mission in detail. Earlier that evening, when a clash between Marduk of the Warmongers and Temujin of the Invaders was at its height. Our heads collide in midair, shattering with an explosion of sparks and sound. What are you planning, Temujin? Why are you holding back? Where are the hidden forces you brought with you from the south? I refuse to believe that you are here alone. Huh, this little exchange has told me everything I need to know, Marduk. You clearly know nothing of the current situation facing the three true guilds. What are you talking about? Nothing will come of fighting you here and now, so we have done in previous loops. Is that not so? You dare deem our battle inconsequential? I do because it is, at least, in its current form. All of the world representatives, including me, are fighting to get their hands on prize. To that end, we have competed in games like this one over and over and over again. We've made treaties, changing the game over time, until we ended up going through a long period of stagnation. But then Tezcatlipoca went and turned everything on its head. Thus, the pact between the three true guilds is broken. Well, let me ask you. Are we going to keep the cycle going every loop? Hmm. Of course we won't, but none of the world representatives are willing to give up their pursuit of the prize either. Although, come to think of it, maybe you can't appreciate that feeling. You have your duty to the prize, but you like the personal attachment to him that the rest of us seem to have. Hmm. Right now, each guild is contemplating its next move, and it's no secret that we're all looking for something that'll bring about a different outcome this time. At least, that's true for the invaders, and I would assume your warmongers are on the same track. Because there is a battle going on beyond those of the previous loops. The whole reason I'm here today is to find out the truth behind one of the ultimate weapons I hear your guild has in works. Ultimate weapon? You claim the warmongers are working on such things? Hmm, pity. And here I was expecting you would at least be aware of its existence. Who knew your guild thought so little of you? Temujin, explain your words at once. I have no obligation to tell you anything, but out of respect for Belor's valiant display earlier, 
I shall. However, nothing in this world is free. You're going to have to give me some information in exchange. What does Valor have to do with any of this? You really are estranged from matters of politics, aren't you? I envy you for that. Valora supported the abolishment of the pact and opposed the invaders, aligning himself with the Scotly Poco. I'm surprised you never thought to question his actions, but... Well, never mind that. Leaving Marduk's second question unanswered, Temujin proceeds to answer the first. I heard that one of the ultimate weapons the warmongers are secretly working on is the moon itself. Okay, but there you go. The moon at war. And the name of the story. The chapter. Where it is, they plan to drop it on the city of Kabukicho in some kind of experiment. The other ultimate weapon being Shiva. I don't know the details, but from what I know about the moon, it would make a horrifying weapon of mass destruction. Which in turn, which would explain why you're the only world representative on front lines. Everyone else knows they're much safer back in their fortress. <laughs> well, Marduk. Does any of this ring a bell? Am I right in thinking that your pals and warmongers made some excuse to send you here alone? Mm, from this point forth, it is my lot to simply watch over you from this base as you dash madly into the fray. Indeed, Representative Gehenna, and so it is my for my humble self. To one such as I, a battle is over the moment and has begun. Mm, so it is, representative of the Land of War. In that case, you and I shall remain here to hold down the fort. Hmm. Your silence tells me all I need to know. Your own guild has been hiding things from you. So, try not to think of our exchange as a betrayal. It's not like we've always fought, fought as guilds. Count me soups in. Some of us happened to come together with others who possessed similar inclinations to form what later came to be known as the Three True Guilds. Hmm? Um, so these are like the pred predecessors of the Three True Guilds? That they, like, uh, have been swapping in? Uh, one. Like, I think they mentioned before that they may have been, like, uh, in the same guilds before. At least in some past. But I guess this was, like, pre Three True Guilds. Maybe I'm misremembering, though. There's nothing to say we can't help each other now. Let me ask you this. Are you the only one fighting out here today? Hmm. Oh, come now. Do you not think it unfair to receive so much information without providing anything in return? I... I'm not alone. Tita, Lord of the Sun, is here as well. And perhaps you know of this, but Shiva... Sallied out before anyone could stop him. Tita too, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps it's no coincidence that the two representatives of the sun were kept in the dark on this. If that's the case, then maybe dropping the moon is actually... Hmm. Ah! Aha! I think I'm starting to see the truth behind all this. I was right to come here. Had I hung back and lounged about on the sidelines, I never would have found anything out. I have no idea how uh, Temujin sounds, so I'm giving him the most default voice ever. <laughs> Let this be the end of our confrontation for today. I shall see you again on Battlefield in due time, Marduk. Halt! Temujin! This is not over yet! Are you sure about that? It is nearly nightfall. I can fight in the dark, but... It wouldn't be right to keep a young calf like you out so late now, would it? <clears throat> now, off to bed with you, calf of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare call me a child, Temujin! Alright then, thank you for that, little ones. Yobu gives each of the light, uh, the little Tanuki a pat on the head. So being very pleased with themselves, they disappear in a cloud of smoke. So there you have it. That's what this ultimate weapon is all about. <laughs> this has to be some kind of joke. They gotta drop the moon? That moon? From the sky? 72 hours from <laughs> 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 uh. 
Uh, unlikely or not, this rumor certainly has my attention. Moonlight is sort of a source of power for vampires like me. No other way, we don't have enough info to go on right now. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I wish the King of the Night were here. He's, he'd get us what we... What the hell is that? Wait, something heavy fell? Wait, did he tour her set? <laughs> Quit teasing! This isn't time for that, Arthur. <laughs> Wait a sec. But no. It can't be! There's no way the moon is coming down on us already, is there? The moon would make a noise if it was falling down. Uh, Suzuka. Turns out the minions I let loose all over town are getting pulverized right now. Ali gapes at Suzuku as she attunes to her minions. She sees what they see and feels what they feel. <laughs> what? Yep. Giant boulders are raining down from the sky, sending them flying left, right, and center. Are there boulders in the moon? I know there's like moon dust. I don't think there should be boulders. Some soldiers Ali personally made her minions are thrown into the air as the ground beneath their feet is blasted to pieces. The bombardment of colossal boulders from the heavens decimates the Kabukicho cityscape in no time at all. Anyone witnessing this destruction would think that the world was coming to an end. It is as if the moon itself has shattered and is falling to the earth like a shower of catastrophic hail. Hmm, trajectory calculations complete. Proceed with volley two of eight. Ogon, Ogon, continue the assault. <laughs> well, show us, Pasibo, one and all. I knew my calculations were brilliant, but this is just too good. The monitor that dominates this command room currently shows an image of a massive cannon in outer space. Suddenly, the computer speakers rattle in their sockets, transmitting a roaring boom as the railgun fires its next shot. Ultra precise, long fi range firing. You're quite the physicist, Bertro. But I have to ask is this what you meant by dropping the moon on Tokyo? Hmm, yet, yet. This is really the first of many steps in my grand plan. Don't you? You didn't really think this was it, did you? Ah, uh, besides, there's still so much more to be done before I can drop the moon out of Tokyo! <laughs> uh, nonetheless, this destruction will suffice to quash the resistance movement in Kabukicho. New log entry. Observe and confirm Bertro's proactive and direct involvement in battle at hand. This is truly erratic behavior for a guildmaster of one of the three true guilds. Now, I just need to decide when to report my findings to Curran. Oh, but before I do that... Oh, whatever is the matter, oh precious spare of mine. Think so soon. Have you got an urgent errand to run, perhaps? Hmm, just a little nighttime stroll for some fresh air, Bertro. As one, the outlaws turn to stare up at the massive boulders raining down upon them. I saw them for a split second, <laughs> but then that was it. Could these re rocks really be moon chunks? Oh, we at war. The warmongers are bombing us. Is that like our friendship bomb or something? Uh, get behind me, partner. Hmm? Eh? Kenko dives in front of you to intercept the colossal hunk of rock headed your way. Before you can touch it, however, Ellie kicks off the ground and charges into it first. Sorry, it's just that, thanks to all the blood I've drunk today, I have a lot of energy to spare. Ellie's limbs are rippling with strength, such as the driving force behind the faith held in vampires, the most powerful of all monsters. Bloodthirsty Nightwalker! Ellie's sacred artifact is the vampiric blood flowing through her veins, and it, sub it substantially enhances her physical prowess. With a casual wave of her hand, she easily shatters the boulder before it can reach you, despite the fact that it is several dozen times her size. Huh, <sighs> piece of cake. Ah, now my boots are all dirty. Holy! 
Uh, somebody benched me. Am I dreaming? Hmm, you think this is impressive? I've handled attacks a bajillion times tougher than that before. Just think what you could accomplish if you got up before sunset. You might actually be a productive member of the guild. Uh, jokes aside, it's clear we're being targeted. We better clear out of this area before we get crushed. Wandering through the Warmonger's Fortress, a duo contemplates Bircher's words. Hmm. I can't report anything to Kern until I understand Bircher's intentions. First, I need to resolve my own questions. For one, what could possibly come of dropping the moon from the sky? That sounds like an abominably shocking plan. However, after an eternity of repeated loops, nothing really surprises or appalls anyone anymore. <laughs> Damn. As Maria said, nothing surprises me anymore. Especially since attacks on a similar scale have been used in previous loops. It's no secret that Tokyo is populated by transients capable of such feats as causing earthquakes and summoning lightning bolts. There have even been those who can manipulate comets. Furthermore, many app users possess rules that allow them to capture such powers. Such as my own sacred effect, which can support the heavens. Marduk of the Warmongers also possesses a sacred artifact that can do much the same thing. In any case, even if all of Tokyo were to become a crater, <laughs> it wouldn't change a thing. Another loop would simply begin. There are re even records of similar events occurring before. The whole point of the Interguild Pacts was to prevent such pointless acts from being repeated yet again. I see. What is the point of orchestrating something so meaningless? Unless... Hmm. Of course. Something has changed. The prerequisite is different this time. That's it. The timing is key here. The Interguild Pacts have been a factor throughout countless bloops, but no more. Things are not the same anymore. What else has been affected? I need to review every possible factor. There's some irony here in that... It was the Guild Pacts that... We're trying to make it so that uh, things wouldn't be repeated, uh, like meaninglessly, and yet it was only after breaking the guild packs that now like uh, something significantly different may be happening. Now that I think about it, dropping the moon could amount to several different things. What if? So Duo's power is all about reconstructing uh, some sort of world, if I remember correctly. Doe's lips curl into a self-deprecating smile as he realizes that Kern would have figured this out much sooner than he did. Oh well, even geniuses are not immune to miscalculations. Rather than dwell on a mighty failure, I ought to do something productive, such as considering how this will all play out. Duo ponders what will occur after the moon has fallen, for if his theory is correct, therein lies Bertrand's true aim. With the moon gone, absolute darkness will descend on tonight. Now, who will profit from a maneuver like that? Okay, Mahakala, I see. Uh, Mahakala, is his existence unique in this Tokyo? Uh, in this loop, that is? It seems to be implied that way, since he's related to uh, Mononobe, who has this beard, and I believe that whole stick was Mononobe and Salmon were unique in this timeline. Hmm. Walking alone through the halls of the Warmonger's fortress, Duo senses someone's eyes on him. So Duo is a spare, and he's not part of the Warmongers. He's kind of like all part of part of all three guilds, which is why he has free reign to walk around like this. I think that's that's the impression I'm getting from it, anyways. Enjoying yourself, Duo. I hope the Warmongers combinations are to your liking. <laughs> I know who you are. You, I am the representative of Gehenna. The one known as he who abhors light. I am Mephistopheles. <sighs> now, if I may have a moment of your time. Ultimate weapon activated too. And a tall map with no special units. Just all infernal. This might be fine. Maybe. 
Marduk is an executive officer of the Warmongers and the world representatives of Babylon. The name of this renowned hero means Calf of the Sun, a title by which he is also called the, by the people of his world. He always faces the enemy head-on, diving into their midst, and defeating them fair and square. With his dragon Mushusu by his side, he was always the first to charge into the most perilous of battlefields. He does not fear injury, he never suspects foul play of anyone. He values trust above all else. Well, that explains his uh, willingness to listen to Temujin at the very least. Even after a dispute that would have left a lesser person was a grudge, he greets the next day without a trace of bitterness, as though nothing had transpired. Marduk is the epitome of everything heroic. A true champion through and through. Hmm. I come here to investigate a vamp vampire menace, and what do I find? A blasted bombardment? I cannot see a thing with all this dust. What is going on? I must ensure the safety of the troops. Can everybody hear me? Answer me! Colossal boulders continue to pelt Kapukicho long into the night. Paved roads, concrete buildings, bustling streets. Everything that made Kabukicho what it was is being destroyed before your very eyes. Here comes another one. It's even bigger than the last one. Another titanic projectile is headed your way, and though Ellie looks minuscule in comparison, like a grain of sand about to clash with the mountain, she is entirely unfazed. Hmm. Don't sweat it. I've got you. Watch this! With as little effort as a flick of her finger, Ellie shatters the incoming boulder with a single strike. Whoa. Remind me never to take off a vampire. I want to get on Brad's side. The remains of the shattered boulder crumble to the ground, only to rise again as the clouds of dust. Hey! Outlaws! Can you hear me? We're being attacked from beyond the clouds. Get behind some- ah, Damn it! The connection's dropped out. Talk about bad timing. Uh, there's nothing else for it. Finding people with all this dust in the air won't be easy, but I'll have to run around and warn them personally. Ibaraki, Tetswax, can you hear me? I have a message I want you to deliver to our guild members scattered around the city. They need to evacuate now. Either that, or get to shelter under Tsukuyomi's door. Understood! An underground shelter? You have one of those? Kabuki show numbers fails to surprise me. Tsukuyomi always likes to be prepared. Maybe he foresaw something like this happening one day. Anyway, if we hold up underground, we'll be cut off from the rest of the world. No matter what happens up here, we'll be safe. Cut ourselves off from the world, huh? We'll be fine no matter what. Now, why does that sound so familiar? Hmm, you okay? Why do you go quiet all of a sudden? Uh, I think this is, uh... He's having memories of his t the time he was, uh... Abducted by Hephaestus and Talos. <laughs> is this all their ultimate weapon can do? This isn't any worse than what their soldiers have already done to the city. Ugh. Ugh. Breaking these rocks is easy enough, but all this dust is making it hard to see. And making me cough. There really is a lot of dust. At this rate, we'll be buried under it. Wait a second. Does that mean... What's the look for, partner? Huh? Oh, looks like we got a message from Shiro. Uh, sh hello! Mm, this is she- Can you- Can- Arthur? Yeesh! The signal's really bad now. Oi, Shiro! You keep cutting out! Unable to maintain connection speed. Reducing audio quality to conserve bandwidth. Complete. Hello! Can you hear me now? It seems our communications with you are very limited at present. I need you to fill me in, as quickly and concisely as possible, on exactly what is happening over there. Mm. 
I see. So the air is filled with dust and debris from the long-range bombardment. I find it difficult to believe that this is merely a side effect. The timing is too precise. Snow, do you think? Yes, it is highly likely that this is a form of jamming deliberately orchestrated by the enemy. Jamming? They're trying to disrupt our comms? Exactly. This feels too convenient to be anything less than intentional interference. In fact, I dare say the disconnection of communication lines must be one of the goals of this bombardment. If we're right, this means that K Kabukicho is currently isolated from the rest of Tokyo. But... Why? What's the point unless... They could be attempting to disperse the same materials that make up the walls of Ikabukuro's underground, as a sort of chef. This was quite a while ago, but do you either of you remember the battle that occurred under Ik Ikabukuro? You're talking about when me and my partner fought our first Ikabukuro ranker battle, right? Oh wow, that brings back memories. Probably the most hated chapter for the info dump. Wasn't it right after I transferred? Feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> sure was. Good times, huh? If I remember right, at the end of that battle. Huh. Hmm, are we bringing back super old information that happened? That's pretty cool. Kango? You think what I'm thinking? I think we've all would arrive at the same conclusion, Harrison. Do you recall what the Ikabuku Berserkers did back then, in conjunction with Shuichi and the Wiseman? What if the Warmongers are attempting to do something similar here in Kabukicho? I believe they were establishing a ranking system there. Um, and uh, with that enclosed area, they were able to keep Sora's power in check. If they are, then this bombardment is merely the beginning. We should expect something big next. Namely... Hey! Hello? Shiro! R19! Can you hear me? <laughs> Damn it! Guess we're completely cut off now. And we're chatting till we get out of Kabuki Show. <laughs> the dust cloud's getting worse. I can barely see your face, partner. Ah! Suddenly, you hear a scream from beyond the haze of dust. Did you hear that, partner? What should we do? Leave it to me. I know exactly what you're thinking, partner. <laughs> Communications with the two devices in Kabikucho are lost. What about Ryoten Toji? Can we reach them? Yes, there are no issues with the connection in question. Alright, I want you to keep trying to get a message to, to Kabikucho R19. Snow, any thoughts? It seems to me that the Warmongers are already moving into the second phase of their plan. Oh, my apologies. You will have to excuse me. I've just realized I must go see Master Claude. He is scheduled to have an important web conference very shortly, and I must see to it that his connection is stable. Alright, you do that. In the meantime, I'll check in with Shuichi and fill in on the current situation. Sometime prior to the Berserker's temporary office. We were just on our way to the meeting. We do not expect you to contact us first. Claude addresses the individuals through the computer monitor. The conference is being held via app. Here we go. It has been some time since we last spoke, Senator Minamoto. Was your last meeting not at the previous election banquet? We have heard much of your exploits in the Senate. We are proud to call ourselves your co eval. Lord Claude, the pleasure is all mine. Allow me to once again communicate my gratitude for assisting my secretary on that occasion. Come now, let us probe one another no longer. Which title shall we address you by? Executive Officer of the Warmongers, or perhaps Representative of the Land of Wa? Tell me what you wish. 
You could call me the Demon Warrior, and I would not make a fuss. Very well. Then let us get down to business. Why have you contacted us? What We are the head of the guild you are currently at odds with. We cannot fathom this. What are you plotting? Would such a meeting as this not merely serve to sow seeds of doubt about your leaderships among your guildmates? <laughs> come, come. I know you are not so foolish as to use labels like friend and foe without due cause. After all, it is not unusual to point a gun at your opponent with one hand while shaking hands with the other during times of war. Hmm. Indeed. Personally, I consider a friend to be merely an enemy who is still of use. Mm. Thus, I have no qualms about, about calling you my friend, Lord Claude. Uh, <laughs> oh, Senator Mi Minamoto, you're quite the character. We have heard that your most respected quality as a politician is that you do not hesitate when it comes to severing ties. Severing ties. Furthermore, you always do it at the precise moment when it would most benefit you. Yet you seem to have need of our friendship yet. Does this mean you are in the process of removing someone else from the picture? Removing someone? Hmm. Ah, comrades! I'm glad to see at least some of our troops are safe now. Now, I would like to call you up by your names and stations. I have an idea who he might be talking about, um, and I don't think it's Marduk, but I'll just keep that to myself. Marduk questions the troops to ensure they are not under vampire control. Good. As few as you are, I am honored to have you with me. I'm afraid communications with the others are down at present. We must investigate and report the cause of these events. Follow me! Yes, sir! We are yours to command, General Marduk. Then let us begin the operation. First, we must do something about this infernal darkness. Worry not, comrades. My sacred artifacts shall make short work of this debris. Engrave my name of Marduk unto thee, celestial bow, brilliant as a shooting star. I command you to part this chaos. Suddenly, a fog-like darkness begins to rise from under the troops, enveloping them like a shroud. They turn around and turn Marduk, shuffling like mindless puppets. <laughs> okay, so they're not vampires, but they are puppets of Daikaku. Uh uh, what is uh, the meaning of? Marduk's face goes slack with shock as his supposed comrades skewer him with their blades. <clears throat> huh? No, this can't be. Uh, how is this possible? It wasn't us. It's like our bodies just. I'm in this race, partner. Whoa! Who's on that on the ground? Hey, did you lot do this? You. You were with that vampire earlier. No. This isn't what it looks like. Something to control of our bodies. Some kind of darkness surrounded us and. Uh, uh, Something's taking over them. Shadows, but save the thing for later, partner. These soldiers are spoiling for a fight. Time to wail on them until they pass out or come back to their senses. All right, this first turn should be easily handled by a uh, thing, <laughs> Kotaro. In oh, I was done. That was done. Oh well. Beat up! Beat up! Beat up! Yes! They're all infernal. Okay, good. No wood disadvantage.
できるバズルドリーマーズの演奏にしっかりついてきてみせなさい<laughs> ほえるねさすがはオル様の見込みたまともだ、right. This is right for the game too ロッチーバーズ、あ、チャージスコアセッツ。There it is。And we can finish up with a double charge. Ultimate weapon activated three. Hey, it's Bathim. Is he sneaking in? The warmongers really dug deep with this fort, didn't they? It's pretty. Kind of looks like a hangar, though. Uh, the pair descend、uh, flight after flight, with footst、uh, their footsteps echoing down the cold, dry stairwell with every step. These lower levels are the heart of our magnificent fortress. The upper levels are just for show. It was not necessary for them to be built underground. Our only requirement was that they would be untouched by light. And here we are. This is the bottom most level. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Now, duo, please try to stay close. Only those with the role of registrar, as well as those who should not exist in this world to begin with, are able to navigate this location without losing their way. Without my guidance, I very much doubt you could ever reach this place, much less leave with your life intact. I have so many questions, but first and foremost, your speech has become more mature since we last spoke. Is this your true nature? Ah,、uh, what a question. I do not think that I have only one true self. Rather, it's a matter of feeling. I tend to feel the full sum of the years we have been in this place when I am here. Hmm. Now, Duo, you do not mind calling you Duo, I hope. I mean no disrespect by dropping titles. That's fine. It saves time. How about you start by telling me what we're doing here? Over the course of countless loops we have seen in this Tokyo, there have been an incalculable number of deaths. The bitter memories of the fallen rest beneath the pillars of this Tokyo. Among them lie individuals who were never invited to this Tokyo to begin with. Mahakal. It's Mahakal. Oh, who? How atypical of you to bring a guest. Is that. This great one sits astride two worlds Deva Loka and Shangri La. Thus, they had to be sealed within the plane of n i a l i t y Else, the two worlds could not have been separated. I see. So, the plane of n i a l i t y is not just a thing that Azastoth controls, it's a general term for,、uh, I guess, things that fall outside of the game of the app. Hmm. I know that when Azastoth、uh, takes you to his world, it's in the plane of n i a l i t y too. Uh, and, and in this case,、uh, this is wh where they're able to hold the individual who is actually two individuals,、uh, Mahakala. Which, as we know from the rules of the,、uh, the game, it, that shouldn't be possible. They are known as the destroyer of worlds in one realm, and as the defender of worlds in the other. Now, some might call this an impossibility or a contradiction. 
However, it is not so different to a conundrum from ordinary politics. It is merely a matter of perspective. Or one individual sees a divine savior bringing about change in a rotten world. Another may see a demonic destroyer of their homeland. The only difference here is whom you ask. The decisions of what to believe. To those who live happy, peaceful lives, a destroyer would be terrifying. Or as to those who have been abandoned by the world in which they live, that same terrifying individual would appear to be their savior. Thus has this great one come to possess a dual identity. They are the protector of the shadows, those who have been abandoned by the world. On another note, don't you think it's about time you revealed yourself, Bathim? So, in chapter 3, we, um, the Berserkers had summoned uh, Thor in a controlled environment. Maybe they're trying to control... Yeah, I see it now. They're trying to summon Mahakala in this controlled environment of complete pitch black darkness uh, by destroying the moon as well as the sun. At least that's what I think. Um, there have been several hints besides, you know, the uh, duo spelling out that it'll be without light. Like uh, Daikaku talking about his allegiance to Mahakala and him destroying a uh, light of both sides from the moon and the sun. Ah, how long have you known? It's been a while, Mephistopheles. After your usual tricks, I presume, plotting and working in the shadows, making it seem like you've been appointed to act in our overlord's stead. Oh, heavens no. I wouldn't dream of it. Bathim, second familiar of our overworld, I assure you that I am merely keeping his affairs in order in his absence. I am nothing more than a vestige of our great overlord. A fragment, if you will. A collection of his shadows cast upon the world in its wake. I believe they also mentioned something like that uh, when we were looking at the world of a... Uh, uh, not Tyrannog, but it, it was uh, Sora's world, I think. Um, Odin, or some god like that, maybe it was Zeus, uh, couldn't enter the world as the main one, and so it had to be like the secondary ones. And it seems that Bathroom is accusing Mephistopheles here that he actually just uh, is taking the reins of control for him as a re representative here. Memories that have been severed from the world are known as shadows. Well, that's a erudite description of something that has been ambiguously described all this time. To be exact, they are masses of information cut off from their associated personas. Hmm. So this is the general definition. They are abysmal, fleeting, transient things, like a shimmering heat haze or a wisp of sooty smoke. Alone, they exist as ghosts, capable of only repeating the motions they carried out when they held their physical forms. So there's the scout Lipoka, who is a shadow of his uh, former self, maybe, as well as his brother. Probably not his brother, but his former self after he cut himself off. Shino is a shadow of Yatsufusa. Uh, I mean, I'm not even sure when they split, and... Maybe I should just read this. However, there are certain transients who, being possessed of a particular role and rule, are capable of controlling and containing the shadows. Oh, okay, I see! Infernal types aren't just shadows. They are also individuals who can control shadows. Being possessed of a particular role and rule, are capable of controlling and containing the shadows within their sacred artifacts. I see... I see. Well, in the case, I don't know what kind of shadows each of these guys controls. Except for Searcher, who controls his uh, children of must spell. Probably fall in from some kind of battle. And uh, Tez, I don't know what, like the past sacrifices or something. Some shadows strive not to forget their loved ones, while others long to regain the lost form. Hmm. Or it could be Tez's original form. I don't know. Some shadows manifest only very briefly to satisfy their lingering grievances before fading like the vapors on the wind. Manifest only very briefly. Some shadows manifest only very briefly. Is that in reference to Shino's, like, uh, desire to stay alive or something after he was killed off in his homeworld? Mm -hmm. Such is the essence of sh shadows. 
Mere reflections of grudges, regrets, and obsessions. So long as we are on the subject of shadows, there is one worth mentioning. He who possesses a rule that allows him to manipulate shadows. So, okay, very direct control of it. This man, who calls himself Daikaku, is the headmaster of the police academy in Shinjuku, and serves as superintendent as well. He wields the shadows for his own means, and is able to give life to their dead memories. He can even take control of living beings by having shadows envelop their bodies. Not only that, but he can, on occasion, also endow these shadows with the capacity to act as his loyal subjects and execute simple orders independently. As we saw when they took over the police station. Daikaku built his wealth by taking part in underground auctions, and he holds dozens of hideouts in and around Shinjuku, in which he stores his so-called wares. Hmm. He means... transients? He has provided the warmongers with a fighting force, though he never deigns to appear on the battlefield himself. He has buried his true self in the deepest dark so that none may uncover it. Somewhere in Tokyo, inside one of the police academy headmaster's hideouts. This is Master Sum. Must eliminate intruders. Seems like he's out right now. Good. This is our chance, Invari. <laughs> You've got some nerve making me do manual labor. This is gonna cost ya! That was like the first time we ever saw Anvari fight. <laughs> Something I got, I don't know. Maybe one of the first. Anvari and Pollux have been following the trail of the underground auctions in search of their captured friends. Their inquiries have led them here to this hideout. Whoa, 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 whoa. There were way too many of these creeps. We can't take him on just the two of us. Oh, uh -huh. perhaps you could use a little help from the silver fox. You. Here, have a taste of my blade of str stratagem. Let's see the Berserkers aren't just acting as uh, comms, but actually moving their own forces, too. Look! That's Bakun over there! Try this on for size! Fists of the face, this! Pollux's fist, a thrill with lightning as the protective star of the god of the sea, lights up above his head. The glimmer of this star's rule can tear holes in darkness and repel calamities dire and terrible. I... Master Hogan, are you here to rescue us? Tsk, tsk. To think you'd wind up getting yourself captured, Tajikaro. Didn't I teach you to keep your guard up? Uh, I would have come sooner. But I need to wait for Daikaku to leave. Now, let's get the others to leave this place. Follow me. Let's see your right, champ. Are you the only one in this section? Ugh. Finally, I can move. It was that weird black fog. It wrapped around me and... Ugh. Where is he? That bastard took over my body. Good question. This plane seems pretty important, but that makes me wonder, where would its owner be, if not here? The scene returns to Kabukicho, Shinjuku. Sometime after Marduk, one of the warmongers' world representatives was attacked by his own troops. Hmm. It is done. I have dealt with General Marduk. I used the shadow soldiers he lent me, but I confirmed it myself. As instructed, I had them missed as vitals. If you'd please inform my esteemed lord, the noble source, that his orders have been carried out. Is it esteemed lord? Yorito? Oh my god! Fucking, this is a... This is a, a coup from the inside, or not a coup, but like... Uh, 
His uh, his allies backstabbed him. Literally, this was uh, facilitated by Daikaku and Kanetomo, and Yoritomo, who gave out the orders in the first place. What the fuck? But why? I guess they really don't want the sun to get in the way when the moon is destroyed, as a, uh, another source of light. I shall. Excellent work, by the way. I'm sure your superiors will be greatly pleased with your handiwork. Hmm. Tanotomo was given an order to bring down one of the guild's executive officers, who also happened to be a royal representative. There you go. The counselor executed this director perfectly. Tanotomo remained silent in the face of the Kaku's praise thinking, It is most likely I who will be disposed of next. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. And it is certain that when I am removed, the noble source will make it seem as if I orchestrated this entire incident alone. I had no choice but to obey. Yet, was that really true? Had there truly been no other alternative? Doubt and uncertainty threatened to overwhelm the counselor's mind. In this world, there is no way to know for who, sure whom one can trust. Tanantomo might be an officer of the warmongers, but that does not make the counselor privy to the guild's information on previous loops. Tanantomo knows little of General Marduk, and just as little about the enigmatic Daikaku. The only thing that Tanatama knows for sure is that the Kaku held official papers bearing orders from the noble source. Tanatama knows that many plots are being woven, even now, bringing nothing but chaos and confusion. The situation is too convoluted for even a wise mind like Tanatama to determine if the decisions were made were, were the correct ones. Tanatama sinks into a gloomy state of resignation, as if all hope had been swallowed by encroaching darkness. Now every last one of those who can shine light upon this Kabukuchuko has fallen. Yes, that's it. I knew it. Tita was also sent uh, in line so he could be gotten rid of. All sources of uh, sunlight and moonlight powers are being taken care of on one fell swoop. Uh, I guess that includes Ellie. I almost feel bad for Marduk, calf of the sun. He must understand that shadows cannot exist when exposed to blinding light like his. I have been plotting all of this for a very long time now, but even I have one to wonder if jamming their communications wasn't an unnecessary step after all. Still, I have to be sure. As sure can be. And now, at long last. And now, at long last, our plan can move into its second phase. I'm not sure if this is uh, uh, the Warmonger's plan or Daikaku's personal plan. I've dedicated myself to bringing the fixer beyond the scenes, but this was one job I could not delegate to another. Only I, with my connection to the One, Mahakala probably, could have accomplished this great task. Daikaku removes his white gloves and press presses his hands into the blood-soaked earth. Engrave my name of unto thee. Heed me, O sacred artifact of the underworld, and give life to the memories of the fallen. Is that... Tanatomo gasps, catching a glimpse of something with a dark gleam, half concealed behind Daikaku's fingers. The same darkness that enshrouds the city begins to pulse from the palms of his large hands, floating outward as if alive. This man. Who is he, really? Is he not Daikaku, after all? Hmm. Naturally, Tanatomo ran an extensive background check on Daikaku, looking to obtain information about this man who acted as the provider of personnel for Penitentia Academy. Many know Daikaku as a divine, one of the seven lucky gods, and bestower of wealth and fortune. However, nowhere in Tanatoma's dossier was it mentioned that he was able to control shadows with his rule. Seriously? You know, that's like pretty much every time he saw him, he was controlling shadows that way? Okay. The moon! I can barely see it anymore! Is that all the smoke? The dust and debris kicked out from the bombardment spread out across the city, forming a sort of dome over the city. Hmm. Trapped beneath this murky covering, the stench of death and decay filled the city streets. Kabukicho is now devoid of all light. With the moon blocked, it appears eerily akin to the realm of the dead described in old tales. Why have you betrayed me, comrades? I 
don't. I cannot fall like this. The onslaught continues even now, and one of the colossal boulders is bound to strike the wounded transient eventually. Is it four time? I don't get it. Are they turning on each other now? Jeez, this is all getting way too complicated for me, so that's where they met Marduk injured. I mean, <laughs> that's made clear. What are we supposed to do? Where are we meant to be fighting? An idiot's partner. Take the man to see your spot. <clears throat> Who? You! Knees there. You're badly wounded. I'm taking to the shelter. Someone can patch you up there. <clears throat> hey, partner. Are you sure we be should be helping this guy? What if he goes wild out of nowhere and attacks us like Shiva did? It's the right thing to do. My, many others have helped me, so... I can't sit idly while people are in danger. Eat the Nakimas! And others. Partner. Well, you're right. What am I doing asking him to say what ifs? We can't just leave him here to die. Man, me help. I'll take up the other shoulder. What's your name anyway? Marduk. Hang in there, Marduk. You're going to be okay. I promise. Thank you. I am indebted to you. At that moment, Yun can go look up the sea. Uh... Partner? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? No way. It can't be. Oh my god, it's Malakal! <laughs> Shit! Someone is suspended in midair among the decimated buildings of Kabuki Show. Suffice to say, the situation is generally quite similar to the experiments he once attempted under Ikebukuro. You speak of the military applications of exceptions. Mahakala would be an exception, or at least an exception adjacent, in terms of he is not allowed to enter the world uh, because of his uh, clash mythologies in each time. Indeed. All the better if the rationality can be maintained, yes. Yeah, if they are summoned under certain conditions, uh, then like Thor, they'll be like reduced. They won't be enormous like uh, Yolks of Thoughts and being. Yep. The mindless rampages in which your experiments resulted uh, would make for impractical weapons. To overcome this issue, the field of experimentation has been extended up to the surface of Kabukicho. Tokyo's underground is connected via ley lines. Logically speaking, one should be able to summon an exception from anywhere. Connected via ley lines? What the heck's that? That is, so long as you have an ally who shares a bond with the, the exception and access to a place untouched by light. Hmm. That ally being Daikaku, I suppose. Oh boy. Nice e eagle spread. He's pretty cute, not gonna lie. Mm. How nice it is to walk upon the surface. <laughs> there are exceptions we've met before, and then there are sentient exceptions. Holy shit. It's kind of... <laughs> that's intimidating. This can't be real. No rules have collided! How is this possible? That is Shu. How did he get summoned? Before you hovers the protector of the shadows, the one whose existence spans both Devaloka and Shangri-La. Mahakala, the shadow exception, has manifested on the streets of Tokyo. <laughs> Advent of the Great Darkness, one. <laughs> 